Jason Lockerbrigger along with Rich Gonzalez here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, Buchanan High School in Clovis for the 100th edition of the CIF State Track and Field Championships. We just finished day one, the prelims. Tomorrow's, of course, the big day, the finals. Today was a pretty good day. Typically, really not quite as strong as we usually have for the California State Meet. There were zero national leaders. We did have five state leaders, but I did see also a pretty good matchup setting up for tomorrow and a couple of big heights as well today. First off, Jason, what was your take on today as far as stuff that really stood out to you for whatever reason? Um, you know, for me, I have to say that the, the two big events for me were the boys 100 and the boys 200. Uh, the southern section has been home to some good battles this year, and the two leaders in that, Eukaipa's Asani Hampton and Muriel Mesa's Christian Shaquille Ricks, brought their games up here and, and kind of gave a teaser of what we can expect for tomorrow. Um, Asani Hampton in the 100, I've uh, been kind of battling a little bit of a leg injury, but definitely looked ready to go in the 100 today. Uh, at a 10:34 win legal, which was about very solid here, very solid showing for him. He spoke very confidently um, going into tomorrow that he would be able to perform at a high level. So I think we can expect to see something good there. Um, in the 200, we had Christian Shakir Ricks, who um, displays a, a, a closing kick that you know kind of left me and you kind of speechless looking at it uh, from above. Very quality. Uh, Hampton got out to a great start. The two of them in the same heat, obviously. Um, Hampton got out to a great start, had the lead, and Shakur Ricks reeled him in with, with a great close there. Very exciting to a state-leading 21-second uh, flat performance. Um, those two things really, really stood out to me on the boys' side. Uh, on the girls' side, uh, Jada Hicks. Uh, she's been knocking at the door, the 1354 door, all season, uh, having accomplished that on four different occasions. Uh, and finally today, she drop kicked that door through uh, and was able to get thir a win legal 13-24, very quality, and she was very excited and looking forward to a big performance for her tomorrow. Jada Hicks at 13-24, number seven all-time in California history. And that on the girls' side is probably the, the best event we have. You have a number of people on the all-time national list in that event and people that have actually set the national record from California in that event. So for her to move to number seven, that says a lot. Uh, in terms of the boys' race, you know, echoing what Jason said, but also looking back to tomorrow, the thing that's really interesting is, yes, Asani Hampton, 10.26 earlier this year, looked awesome. Today, 10.34, I believe it was, looked very, very impressive, despite the recent injury. Looks so good there, yet he almost looks like he's standing still against Christian Jukiewicz in the 200. I can't think of a time that we had two guys this good in the same races well, they look so different in each of these. One is dominant in one, one is dominant in the other. It's so incredible. The guy that really I'm, I'm more impressed by, really, is Christian Shakir Ricks. His top end speed, I've seen very, very few Californians that have that kind of a gear in something like the 200. Who comes to mind right away? The kid I saw as a sophomore, opened my eyes, was Michael Norman. We all saw what he did the year after that, and the year after that, and since then. And I see Christian Shakir Ricks, and I said, this guy's pretty special. Now, that said, Asani, because he's cocky, which he want to have in a sprinter, I kind of wonder, what does he have left? And that 10:30 state record for Riley Washington could be what he has left. So that's going to be great right then and there. He's, he's stated that his goal for tomorrow is to win the state title, and that's the number one goal. But you know a sprinter in the back of their mind, there's a, there's a tendency to want to do more than that. And he's been so close, and, and he's right there on the doorstep. I expect him to not only go for the victory, but also the record as well. Should be noted, when I talked to him also, he mentioned the state victory, but then he did mention, yeah, <laughs> he'd love to have the 1030 state record. And he said, oh yeah, and the 1025 Henry Thomas all-time <laughs> state record. So he's thinking about it. Um, another thing, and we can't quite exactly quote what he said, but when he crossed the finish line flying after that 100, Asani Hampton did say this, track is super fast so he's pretty jazzed looking forward to tomorrow it should be pretty special and also if those weather conditions kind of play a good part we definitely have an opportunity to see a chance at history tomorrow as well for tomorrow the state high the, the tomorrow the high is forecast to be 101 here at the stadium at the start of the meet by the time we get into those later events it's still going to be in the low 90s today the forecast was a high of 93 it never materialized in the stadium the high was 85 which it felt better. Well, I've never quite seen conditions like this here at uh, Buchanan's Veteran Stadium, so that's pretty cool. Um, a couple of the other things, the, the other two things that really catch my eye for tomorrow are the 800s, both the boys and the girls. 
uh, our girl Brewer, Lisa Brewer from California San Ramon, she's nursing an injury. She didn't quite uh, get it done today, but it's prelims and she's defending state champion. Kathleen McIntosh of Del, of Del Oro looking very good in that event. Oh, yeah. Uh, her close there in that last lap, she dropped a, a sub 62 second final lap there, uh, 207 64, I believe, which is a new state leader and top three in the United States currently. Uh, definitely opened some eyes. She's been runner up to a list of the last couple of years, so I think she would have to be the person I'd look forward to kind of break through if, if you know, Alyssa not being able to go. And the boys 800 tomorrow. There's been a lot of talk recently about the, the California, the Orange County trio. And we have uh, Ryan Bush, we have Sam Van Dorf. Um, help me out here. Brett Hickman. Small, Brett Hickman, Mission Viejo. Just three great kids in recent, and a few others in the mix also. But I really think a couple of the NorCal kids are very dangerous. Jason Gomez of Westmont, and also our defending champion, Chris Charvet from Heritage of Brentwood. Those two guys, I think, are really good money, and it'll be tough, tough to beat. One thing we should all note in the field events, the field events, a lot of times it's about just qualifying, getting through. But uh, Jocelyn Budwig, she's our, she's our girl coming in from Fowler. She's had a great resume this year, consistency, and she got it done today. She went over 170 feet in the discus. And again, she's been the most consistent. We've had some kids that have thrown well this year at certain venues where the wind has been right. She's done it a lot of places. So obviously she is the one that really has to be the favorite tomorrow in that event. It's very interesting. Uh, she, she stated that she actually didn't feel like her throw was that great, and when she saw the distance, it was kind of shock and excitement. Um, and that everything kind of came together for her. So I look for a big performance tomorrow. Uh, we know in the shot put, she's the, the leader and the favorite there. Um, if she can put together another strong performance like she did here today, it could be a two-time trip up to the top of the state meet podium tomorrow. And lastly, with the prelims, sometimes things don't go true to form and things go bad also. We had it again today. Boys 4x100, St. John Bosco, they were the number one team in the state coming in at 40.94. 42-16, they've been nursing an injury on one of their key legs, did not advance. Carson, we saw them last year, unfortunately on the girls' side, had a bit of a meltdown on state finals day. Uh, today, in the 4x1, they came in with a 47.01, one of the best times in the state. They did not get out either, and they also had a setback, Joan on Young in the uh, long jump. One of the better long jumpers in the state, she finished 13th, didn't advance either, so some setbacks there. Anything else to add? I, I think you saw here today just how difficult it is to maintain a high level of performance throughout the season. You get here to the state meet and little nicks and injuries can affect you in a lot of different ways. So for these athletes that were able to advance it tomorrow, um, I think you're going to see some strong performances and hopefully you'll see a high level meet uh, that state meet has always been known for. Well, just in closing, I, mean, I, I don't want to sound like the Debbie Downer in a sense. I had been saying quietly for the last year and a half, California's kind of not quite as strong right now. We're at a bit of a lull stage. We saw it again, no national leaders today. But we've seen a lot of events take shape where it should be a lot of close races tomorrow. And that might bring out something special for some of this. Hopefully we'll get a few national leaders. Hopefully a few kids getting up the all-time state list. Who knows, maybe some state meet records. Because we do have some kids here that can really move, as we mentioned at the start of the interview. All right, until tomorrow for the finals. Rich Gonzalez, along with Jason Hockelberger. We also have our team here, Jimmy Sue, Gene Leon Guerrero, Mike Kennedy, Kirby Lee. A few more here. They're I mean, all over the place. Oh, man, all Dylan over Stewart. Over Dylan too. Stewart behind the lens. Okay. <laughs> we just got to cut that out. <laughs> all right. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks.